I once got dosed with a man's amount of testosterone on an accident. I sat on this chair and I got this like stuff on my arm and I was like, oh, wow, that's weird. That chair slippery. must have been like polish or something. And yeah, then so some a man rubbed testosterone cream, cream on his and then inner he forearm. Sat on the, he sat then. on the chair and I sat on the chair and I start looking at my boss and my coworkers and I'm like, oh my God, why do I want to, why do I want to like, uh, why do I want to do things with my co, <laughs> why do I want to do things with my coworkers? Like this is making no sense. What's up guys, Derek from ourplaysmartaids.com. Today we're gonna to be reacting to this medical doctor who is a woman accidentally getting dosed with so much testosterone that she not only gets male level testosterone levels apparently within short order, but in addition to that, wants to literally fuck her coworkers. <laughs> that is what is being implied here. So um, I've been tagged for a while on this. Apparently there's tags of me going back as far as 25 weeks ago on this uh, video here but I only came across it recently and we're gonna get into it. So watch it start to finish with me and I'll kind of give my commentary as we go. I once got dosed with a man's amount of testosterone on an accident at a company that I was working at. I was sitting on a chair and like we were making custom compounded nutraceuticals and hormones. It was like personalized mm -hmm. medicine. And I sat on this chair and I got this like stuff on my arm and I was like, oh wow, that's weird. That chair slippery, it must've been like polish or something. And yeah, then so some a man rubbed testosterone cream, cream on his and then inner he forearm. Sat on the, he sat on the chair, <laughs> and I sat on the chair, and I start looking at my boss and my coworkers, and I'm like, oh my God, why do I want to, why do I want to, like, uh, why do I want to do things with my co, <laughs> why do I want to do things with my coworkers? Like, this is making no sense. Like, <laughs> so if I'm just sitting here and I have a, you know, arbitrary amount of, like, I don't know, some, some, rub off amount of testosterone cream on the chair and then I it, it's wiped on my inner forearm what is the probability that that is going to instantly absorb and assimilate get into circulation avoid binding proteins entirely get into target tissues bind cause gene transcription and actually have you know very potent androgenic effects that notably impact my libido and sex drive like fucking spontaneously where it's like a near immediate translation of effect um that's simply not how it works uh in my opinion but let her i'll let her continue and you know maybe i'll be uh proved wrong and i'm like what is wrong with me and i go in the bathroom and i'm just like looking at i'm just like put my hands on this on the countertop and i'm like look in the mirror i'm like molly what's wrong with you <laughs> and i was like oh testosterone oh shit oh my God, I've got a man's amount of testosterone in me today. This is wild. And I was like, if I had to deal with this every day, I don't know. I think women actually should just get prescribed a man's amount of testosterone for like a week and just yeah. like walk through society feeling that turned on, feeling that level of like, holy shit, that's what it's like to have a man's amount of sex drive. It is actually quite fucking distracting, I will tell you. But... uh <laughs> I am skeptical that that was actually what she experienced, to be honest. Yeah. And I think if women understood that, they'd be like, whoa. And I think every man should go to a gay club and just like dance with a bunch of gay guys and know what it feels like to have a bunch of people objectify you and like look at you as an object that like they could, they could possess. <laughs> it's like an interesting <laughs> perspective from what is apparently a MD. I'm not saying that it's bad or good or anything. It's just... Uh, um, I don't know. Let's look at some of the comments. Uh, I may need some testosterone in a few years. I swear menopause is coming for me. I already don't have a sex drive. Yeah, by the way, for women, very, very impactful to quality of life if you have your hormones crashed. This is why combined oral contraceptives are so massively impactful in a negative way to quality of life for so many individuals is the insidious disaster that occurs with your endogenous hormone production when you administer a synthetic progestin especially concurrently with a synthetic um, like ethanol estradiol which is significantly more potent than bioidentical estradiol and is essentially designed to like pseudo castrate you more or less so for women like testosterone is very important it's not something to overlook it's not a male hormone however you know d does a chick need you know male levels of testosterone no that's not what she's saying though but I'm just like, for her to have extrapolated from that experience that rubbing a little amount of test cream on her forearm immediately translated to like 
all the fucking floodgates open, the gene transcription, all the way down the line, and sexual arousal goes off the charts, and all of a sudden you wanna bang your coworkers. Like, what is the probability of that? We'll get into the pharmacokinetic profile shortly, and then we can get a more clear idea if this actually makes any sense. But let's get into some of the more um, deeper comments in the comments section. First of all, testosterone, regardless of how it is administered, would never act that quickly. Second of all, there are plenty of women who are walking around with a high sex drive. A higher, even normal functioning sex drive is clearly not indicative to only men. Exactly. Um, I've been celibate for three years. Believe me, I understand what it means to fantasize about everyone, including the annoying coworker. It's not fun. Interesting. Exclamation point. Um, the lack of signs here. Crying and laughing face. Psych 101, skip two. I'm a little bit skeptical. That's not to say the placebo effect didn't play a part and she didn't have these experiences but I can't imagine such a small dose of testosterone accidentally administered to her skin, no less, would have such a dramatic effect. Inquisitive face. LOL, I have gay coworkers, and yeah, I get girls for sure now, but happy to know she gets us. We can help that feeling. Absolute garbage. This was the video I was talking about. Laugh my ass off. <laughs> what happened to your eye? So did you let yourself really, did you let yourself rye objectified? Any interesting observations? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Next one, that's not how it works by Matt Glass, theater artist, clapping emoji. Things that didn't happen for 200, Alex. Is this a real conversation? Maybe placebo, but it doesn't work like this. Otherwise, bodybuilders would just rub testosterone cream on their skin instead of injecting themselves for 12 weeks straight to raise their test levels at Aubrey Marcus. Wouldn't work that quickly. Even injecting tests with no ester takes approximately an hour to really get to a level where you can feel it. Cuck boy. <laughs> Aubrey, you and your silly friends are idiots. Sheesh. What is a man's amount of testosterone and how would you ever receive an entire man's amount of testosterone without an injection? She is inept. Does she have no grasp of biology? Maybe not for you, but I've taken d acid and felt effects within 30 minutes. I can only imagine what straight test would do. Just remember, not everyone is you and you won't have the same reaction. A gay club and getting dosed with test is not the same. Men do not walk around turned on all day. She needs to do more stretches for the amount of reaching she is doing. He trip she is having sounds more like a hard drug trip. She was just looking for an excuse to jump people. Crying laughing face. Yeah, this, this might... <laughs> Liar, this might be the worst story I've ever heard. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh man, very interesting perspective. Dumbest of the dumbest was, is she selling test cream? People believe this shit? There's a lot of people who seem to know how this works, surprisingly. I got my hormones checked and I have an abnormally high amount of high test. I have an abnormally high testosterone for female normal estrogen. Hi, testosterone. Welcome to my world, baby. Crying laughing face times three. So she sat there for two months? <laughs> or was she lying? I'm confused. Please stop sharing lies like this. This is a huge lie. Jesus. A lot of people know their shit, seemingly. Oh, <laughs> someone on the bottom. It was like, and she is a doctor with like a fucking monkey emoji. I just missed it. Oh, there it is. And she's a doctor. Exclamation point. Shocked monkey. Can't even fucking look because it's so brutal. She messed up so bad. That's not how it works at all. Get the fuck out of here, lady. She swears she grew a male head mustache. I don't know. Whatever that emoji is. But <laughs> hey, there's still more in the clip. Let, let's finish. I th I think that's a powerful recommendation. You know, honestly, you know, I mean, you can't really recommend anything. You but can't I, do, but, it, obviously but it would be that. very, it would be very like illuminating. You know, to understand, to be able to see through each other's eyes. All right, so let's circle back to the test cream on the arm and then we'll get into the pharmacokinetics. The company that I was working at, I was sitting on a chair and like we were making custom compounded nutraceuticals and hormones. It was like personalized mm -hmm. medicine. And I sat on this chair and I got this like stuff on my arm and I was like, oh wow, that's weird. That chair's slippery. It must have been like polished or something. And yeah, then, so some, a man rubbed testosterone. <laughs> you dip your fucking arm in test cream? Like Jesus. Like when you just have like a, a little like random amount that was residue on a chair like uh, anyway let her continue he, cream and then he sat on the he sat on the chair and i sat on the chair and i start looking at my boss and my coworkers, and i'm like oh my god why do i want to why do i want to like uh, why do i want to do things with my co why do i want to do things with my coworkers? like this is making no sense you're right it makes no sense because when we actually look into the Pharmacokinetics of test cream or gel or any of these kinds of transdermal administration patterns. We see, for example, in the best case scenario, if you applied this shit right to your goddamn scrotum, 
and you had like maximum assimilation, you know, the highest peak in this stuff, maximum 5 alpha reduction from the local activity of 5AR, all this stuff. We have a concentration profile in blood serum after administration of a 200 milligram dose of testosterone via a toppy pump and versa base. And we have here the pharmacokinetics represented in minutes to peak. And we have a concentration in nanograms per deciliter. And as you can see here, once we get to this uh, giant spike after administration, it is at least a couple hours in, and this is literally applying it to your scrotum. So imagine on your inner arm, some residual random amount on a chair. What would you expect? Well, it seems like it is closer to six to 16 hours for peak concentration times. One previous study has reported that the pharmacokinetics of scrotal application of test gel was similar to that of a scrotal testosterone patch or a five-fold larger dose of non-scrotal testosterone gel consistent with at least a five-fold higher transdermal bioavailability of testosterone. And this is like skin permeability and stuff is going to have a large impact on the actual assimilation of these hormones and how much gets into circulation. So obviously you're going to have, you know, a massively different amount being absorbed if you're applying it to your scrotum versus if you're applying it to your shoulder or something or to your, like, no one would do this, but to like your foot or like, you know, some random area, your goddamn butt cheek, like it's all going to be different in terms of how much actually is uh, getting through. And it has to do uh, partly with, you know, molecular mass, as well as the actual skin permeability and the preparation of the compounded um, drug. So ultimately we have um, other studies assessing pharmacokinetics of testosterone application to non-scrotal skin have yielded variable time of peak concentration, Tmax, ranging from six to 16 hours. Yes, six to 16 hours. Although most studies reveal a marked delay in peak serum con testosterone concentration, another study of 100 milligram testosterone gel applied to non-scrotal skin and hypogonadal men reported rapid absorption kinetics and higher Cmax. However, in that study, the residual endogenous testosterone these men left it unclear in that study how much was attributable to the exogenous testosterone. So. Ultimately, it seems like at best you were getting it in your system and peaking in, you know, in a couple hours, you're going to get a massive spike if you were literally applying it to your, I don't know if she was applying it to her labia or something, but it was in her inner forearm. This is not representative of, you know, scrotal application or labia administration. This is literally <laughs> some residual amount of cream that is uh, going to spike in, you know, six to 16 hours at best. And is that going to be representative of an actual like therapeutic male level of hormone from that one random dosage? Probably not. Is it going to be something that spikes in a matter of minutes where you are sitting in a room with your coworkers and all of a sudden you want to jump their bones? No, probably not. Is this representative of really anything that makes sense more than placebo probably not in my opinion but it was interesting she like literally went in the bathroom and to look herself in the face and be like stop being so fucking horny apparently on the, he and sat then. on the chair and i sat on the chair and i start looking at my boss and my coworker. i do things with my like, what is wrong with me and i go in the bathroom and i'm just like looking at i'm just like put my hands on this on the countertop and i'm like look in the mirror i'm like molly what's wrong with you it's like some trend shit just looking in the mirror and just waiting for that fucking trend cough or are you just like, what am I doing with my life? And I was like, oh, testosterone. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. I've got a man's amount of testosterone in me today. This is wild. And I was like, if I had to deal with this every day, I don't know. I think women actually should just get prescribed a man's amount of testosterone for like a week. And just like so, again, like I'm not doubting that there could be something absorbed and something happening to some extent. But for it to be like to the gravity that she is elucidating seems pretty far-fetched and it seems more like a driven through placebo this is not exactly how it works as many have said in the comments section this is a representation of overall sexual desire in hypogonadal men that are administering transdermal testosterone gel and as you can see here sexual desire at baseline based on a scale of zero to seven we're at about two at baseline now, how long did it take to get to peak where it then retained, you know, like stability on the hormone administration schedule? Almost 30 days. Yes, so these individuals, despite the fact that their serum levels might accumulate within, you know, have a peak time of, depending how they're applying it, you know, relatively short order, this stuff accumulates over days and has a cumulative effect. And gene transcription is not just like an instantaneous thing that happens right when it hits your fucking skin. This is something that needs to have 
Like there are many different things that take place and while it can have like fast-ish onset and things can be pretty quick in your body when it comes to hormones and their impact on neurology, impact on actual physiologic effects and whatnot, you know, to attribute a change in sexual desire to go from literal, not just like hypogonadal male, but like female territory to like instantly like peak male. I want to like literally, I'm literally in puberty right now and I want to like fuck anything that moves essentially. Maybe that's not the extent she's implying, but it's like, you know, she went from just sitting there to being like, now I want to, you know, do shit with my coworkers. Seems like it was uh, like, a, you know, zero to hundred, like pretty fucking quick. And that's just not what we see in the data. We see, you know, something that is, you know, a much more drawn out uh, peak time for actual serum concentrations. And then above and beyond that sexual desire metrics do not peak until about at least a few weeks in from what we can tell in the data. So for me, it was just interesting to see this uh, breakdown. You know, I'm not, uh, you know, trying to shit on her too hard necessarily. I think she's definitely uh, having a little bit of placebo here. Like as somebody who is relative, like, <clears throat> probably educated about hormones. She probably just assumes like, oh, test cream on my arm has some sort of like, you know, some placebo effect I can imagine would be very, very possible given a female find like actually discover like, oh my God, this is testosterone on my arm and like all the things that go through their head as a result of trying to interpret what they think testosterone feels like and what it is like to think that they're dosed with a male amount of testosterone, like I can imagine where, you know, there could be a very, very significant like confounding factor of, you know, obvious placebo effects. But I don't know, like some, <laughs> some of her descriptions of like your exposure therapy to learn what it's like to be objectified should be going into a gay club and dancing with gay dudes. <laughs> it's like kind of a, a weird uh, departure from the initial conversation, I thought, but I don't, I don't know, man. So anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I think more education needs to be presented around uh, hormones, especially replacement therapy, even for like in the context of females, this is not something that, you know, I don't think females should like by accident be getting on tests is like the only way they should ever encounter it in their life. I think that there is significant utility to hormone replacement in, you know, postmenopausal women and getting it uh, started in a way that is actually the most safe, you know, oversight from a high quality doctor who understands, you know, even the impact on administration practices on, you know, blood viscosity even like if you're doing transdermal versus like an oral like are you doing a synthetic you know uh, replacement of estrogen are you using literal ethanol estradiol or some sort of like analog synthetic analog that is not actually bioidentical and it's actually going to be problematic for your health and not actually that useful um, or there's a net negative in using it as opposed to using a bioidentical estradiol or is there even benefit for you are you somebody who is even requires this, you know, having high level blood work and then analyzing these things, these things with high sensitivity using LCMS testing when appropriate for, you know, estradiol sensitive analysis. All of these things are things that ultimately it is uh, very, very prudent to have a high quality doctor in your camp who understands hormone management and can get on top of this stuff before you have, um, you know, bone mineral density loss, you know, significant amounts of muscle loss in old age, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not saying everyone should be on HRT, by the way, as they age or, you know, women post menopause. It's just the ROI for some individuals is clearly a net positive, And I believe it is becoming more widely accepted, the therapeutic promise of it, especially as an intervention in postmenopausal women. It's a very, uh, you know, taboo topic, you know, testosterone in females, for example. But there is definitely a discussion to be had around it at the very least, given that in menopause, it's not like with men where you have like this, you know, titration of your hormones like spike into the stratosphere and you're like a peak male. And then over time, they just slowly, slowly, slowly dip off. For females, it's literally like you hit menopause and just like that, all of a sudden it's like your estrogen's crushed to fucking nothingness, essentially testosterone crushed to nothingness project, like all of these things become essentially like non-existent and everything that they supported. It's like, like you're just left to fucking deal with the ramifications, regardless if it's muscle loss, bone loss, quality of life, libido going down the toilet, um, relationship quality, like all of this stuff is massively impacted by hormones. And for you to just be subjected to a sudden crashing of them and just be like, oh, well, it's a normal physiologic thing. I guess I better just deal with this like much shittier quality of life 
depending that that is actually what happens, because again, this is a variable thing. Not everyone should just haphazardly be doing it. Why you need a recommendation by a doctor who actually sees it fit for you if warranted. But again, things to be looking into. And I do not think the importance of testosterone in women should be overlooked, especially in young girls who are using combined oral contraceptives and other means of birth control that suppress their natural testosterone levels. They don't realize how much they're being impacted by this stuff too. On the opposite side of the spectrum, if you're suppressing yourself through synthetic means in order to achieve contraception, like this is also going to be massively impactful on your quality of life, potentially on your ability to, you know, get the body composition outcomes that you want, uh, mood regulation, emotional stability, stress resilience, like all hugely, hugely impacted by this stuff and is uh, very, very worthwhile to educate yourself thoroughly about, and especially before you expose yourself to anything as a like teenage girls being thrown on random like, you know, synthetic progestins and ethanol estradiol with no education around what it does to their hormonal state fucking mind-boggling shit dude so anyways let me know what you guys think in the comments down below all the comments help the algorithm and much appreciated like subscribe check out my blog moreplacemoredates.com follow me on instagram at moreplacemoredates facebook snapchat twitter tiktok couple podcasts if you want to support the channel you can check out anything i'm associated with in the video description below most notably for this video in particular is uh self-service labs i would say getting your own blood work checked um using uh biomarkers that have been audited and pre-approved by me, my team of providers, doctors, patient care coordinators, etc. As well, if you just want to get build your own panel, you know, we have the most cost efficient and elaborate lab builder, I believe in the country right now, you know, I could be wrong, but it's pretty fucking cost efficient and has availability of markers that simply are not things you can get easy access to at other lab facilitating companies. They'll have it like buried in a big expensive $700 panel. It's the only way you'll be able to get it for, or they just don't offer it at all. Whereas for us, we have like literal single biomarkers with you know the most high sensitivity of testing for some of the most obscure stuff. And you can just add it to your own checkout menu and add it to your cart, check out and go get your bloods whenever you want. Um, but also if you want like concierge level preventative medicine, healthcare oversight, you can work with one of our providers, doctors, and get actual recommendations, interpretation of your labs, medications if warranted, you know, supplementation regimen recommendations, um, dietary intervention recommendations, lifestyle change, sleep hygiene, etc. We do it all, we're turnkey, and we're not just people who work with People who are interested in, we're not just people, we're not just a company who are interested in working pe with people who are trying to get on hormones or trying to optimize their hormones necessarily, although that is um, a big bread and butter part of our uh, company, but also individuals who are just looking to optimize their quality of life, mental clarity, sharpness, etc. Having your lab work and diagnostics analyzed by a professional, I cannot recommend highly enough, especially if you're an individual who is a um, high performing entrepreneur or somebody who's just mindful of, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, you know, staying on top of your health so you don't have to dig your way out of a hole in the future with some sort of something you could have avoided had you got on top of it sooner. Like there are a lot of things that go totally overlooked that would be easily identifiable via blood work or medical oversight if you had somebody in your camp looking out for yourself. Like for example, even Grego Gallagher, he's like the you know, peak natural physique, you know, one of the pinnacle examples of an amazing athlete in this industry. And uh, when we were going over his blood work, his homocysteine, if I recall correctly, was like almost, it was like fucking sky high, dude. Like, and he see, clearly has like a very significant methylation issue. And addressing that, like he only discovered that through high quality blood work, getting elaborate diagnostics. That's the kind of thing that you wouldn't even think you had because you're otherwise a, you know, high performing athlete with good genetics, but sometimes obscure stuff will bite you in the ass insidiously if you do not get it addressed. So I recommend uh, anybody get a baseline uh, lab panel, you know, just for your own state of health assessment. But for those looking to optimize as well or get medical oversight, again, you can check it out. It's in the video description below as well as anything else I'm associated with. It's all down there. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.